Thanks for joining Sudhindra. Hello. So, yeah, we can uh, slowly get started and others could join on the way. Yeah. So first of all, thanks everyone for joining the uh, meeting. And I believe some of you took part in the oversight committee meeting as well uh, on Tuesday and the project Persia uh, was discussed there as well. And actually I got to know uh, Sundhindra thanks to Melissa on she introduced me to Sundin a few weeks ago to uh, have a presentation in our SIG and that was a good idea and that's why we have Sundin with us today. And that is the only topic on our agenda because the discussions happening within TOC and we will we may have during this meeting may change uh, the uh, may impact on this proof of concept idea as well. So let's have the presentation from Sudhindra and hopefully a demo, and then we can use the rest of the meeting for open conversation about how we can collaborate on uh, software supply chain together and look for you know potential opportunities with Persia as well. So okay. Sudhindra, I will stop <coughs> sharing. So feel free okay. to start sharing. Okay. Um, thank you for having me here. I will share a slide deck. Are you able to see my, my slide deck, Persia Securing OS Supply Chain? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. <clears throat> uh, see something. Okay. Okay. Um, so <clears throat> the, this is a project that uh, we have been working on uh, at JFrog. We, we kicked it off um, uh, six months, seven months ago. And we have been, we have been since uh, talking about this and sharing our ideas. And um, now, now we get get a chance to talk to you and see what you think about it and um, see what your feedback on this is. <clears throat> uh, so my name, a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Sudhindra Rao. I am at JFrog. Uh, I uh, I did um, uh, a lot of uh, what you call what we call as partnership integrations and uh, through through collaboration with Steve Stephen Chin, uh, we sort of kicked off this idea uh, about Persia. We saw some gaps in the open source um, supply chain. And and possible solutions. So here is um, here is what we think about it and what we are doing. Okay, um, so if you look at the current state of uh, supply chain, um, it is it is pretty uh, 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 grim. Um, and when I when I say supply chain, this this supply chain it ha also has its challenges given uh, given what happened in the last two years. But we are not going to talk about this supply chain. We are going to talk about the supply chain that affects uh, what we do, uh, which is the software supply chain, and uh, and if you if you are in the software world, you you must have heard about the SolarWinds uh, software uh, attack that happened and that keeps on that keeps people on their toes uh, even today. That also has uh, triggered an action from the federal government in the of the United States to to bring together people uh, uh, who are uh, <clears throat> who are experts in this field to actually solve this problem uh, well. So this is the problem we are going to talk about. Um, some examples of what has happened uh, in the past. Um, uh, I don't know if how many of you remember the uh, famous Equifax data breach. Uh, and this happened because they did not keep their Apache struts up to date. Uh, so a vulnerability, vulnerability uh, was exploited and that has, exp uh, that has exposed millions of users of personal data, credit card information, et cetera, et cetera. Even today, I, I know of people who receive mortgage or what all kinds of information based on their data that may have been breached um, during this attack. So this still this still affects and hurts people. Another example, which is very recent, um, is the Log4j uh, Log4j vulnerability uh, Log4j for work for shell, uh, which uh, which has been uh, in production for many many years, and and this vulnerability has affected many many installed systems um, and. If you are if you are in this field, you see how many people actually uh, are burnt by this uh, in terms of pr producing um, the fixes, putting patching the fixes in time, and so on. So uh, every time we don't do the right thing uh, for our open source software, it hurts us really, really badly. Another example, very recent May uh, May timeframe, uh, this happened with the Rust community, uh, and this is uh, this is a typo squatting attack. Uh, but these kinds of uh, malicious attacks happen on the uh, on the software supply chain, uh, which affect the open source systems and and then they affect uh, install bases. 
And here is a recipe of how a, a hacker can actually masquerade uh, somebody somebody's uh, you know expired domain um, and uh, and take over their uh, their maintainer uh, uh, credentials and then and then cause you know ca cause damage. Uh, so every aspect of the supply chain needs to be secured. Uh, and uh, and if you look at um, uh, look at how we do it, we don't have we don't have a good plan. And whatever I shared so far, it's just the tip of the iceberg. There are many, many vulnerabilities which we don't talk about as much, which don't get enough press, which don't, uh, which are, which are, which kind of are hiding uh, because they are not being exploited today. Uh, and uh, and all of them are uh, how they how they are uh, you know exploiting the open source uh, side of things. So what are we going to do about this? Uh, we uh, and. And when we use this open source software, currently uh, our, our uh, uh, knee jerk reaction is, has it come from these um, you know, uh, central repositories that we have implicitly trust? Uh, but that is not enough. There have been situations when these, uh, these central repositories uh, have been unavailable for hours together, thus stopping just paths to production. Uh, there have been attacks that, that have uh, you know, put this uh, trust um, question question this trust. Like, should we even blindly trust this? Do we need more trust mechanisms? And and, and there are people who are working on building better mechanisms to uh, to prove this trust. Uh, so, given all that, current state of affairs is that uh, we are picking software that we find on the sidewalk and sticking it into our production system. That is the state of affairs we are living in, uh, right? Which is pretty grim, and we need we need to do something about it to. To, seek, to provide the trust that is missing to, to secure the sub, software supply chain. <clears throat> uh, so some work that has happened in the past, uh, in, in, in the very recent, actually after the solar news attack and all of that, is this, is this emphasis on building software bill of materials. There is also a White House executive order, which says, you know, we need, we need tools and technologies so that this becomes easy. This becomes uh, transparent. And this is a, here is a blog that uh, that talks about um, the software bill of materials. There is there are research groups that are working on actually uh, putting putting a framework in place. And one of the frameworks uh, you might find in literature is the Salsa framework, uh, where where they're talking about in details how the software uh, supply chain uh, can be hacked, what are the areas that need attention, how they are uh, exploited, uh, what do you need to reinforce, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And here are here are like the eight uh, or nine gates, which you know, or attack vectors uh, in this very simple um, uh, CD flow. And uh, if you are doing real software development, you know that the uh, a, C, a typical CD flow is much more complicated than this. It has much more in, levers and in and out gates, uh, which which means that there are more attack vectors and more uh, more places uh, that that an attack can happen, right? Uh, at JFrog, we talk about this vision that you know we 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 need to be in the future where where software is liquid, and to make that possible, we need we need we need a supply chain that is automated, that can be implicitly trusted, and that that is always available that that you can depend on. You should not need to you know stop your flow to production because one one uh, element of that supply chain is. Is broken down, not available, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So uh, that is what will relieve us from uh, from the daily drudgery of figuring out where this needs to be deployed, how it needs to be deployed, et cetera. Uh, so we need something that that allows that automation. Uh, so uh, allow us to present Persia, uh, and and uh, we are calling the, calling this project, which will which will provide you a consensus based build network. It will provide you a uh, provenance log, and it will provide you the decentralization, which is currently missing, so that you you can depend on it. Let's uh, dig a little deeper into into these, right? And what we intend to do is uh, provide a uh, a network uh, of of system uh, which is secure by design, which is reliable, and which is open, which is built in open source and built in in a, in a way that. Uh, that is not governed by the, just one organization, right? And that is what will bring the trust, is what we feel. And that is what will make it automatically trusted. Uh, here is a little bit about, you know, how the word Persia came into being. 
uh, and why we thought that is a good uh, good idea to use uh, for this project. Uh, so again, uh, in ancient Greek um, warfare, um, they used uh, this technique of communicating via a set of torches uh, to signal of impending dangers. And it is a decentralized uh, distributed communication mechanism. And we thought that since we are building something that is decentralized, uh, that is a good metaphor um, to call uh, this project. So that's where uh, Persia comes about. If you wanted to learn more, uh, I'll send this um, uh, 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 this presentation along and you will have the links um, so you can learn more about it. <clears throat> yeah, so how does Persia look like? Persia, uh, uh, the basis of Persia is first is it needs to be uh, a distribution network and not a central location because central locations are uh, prone to uh, single point of failures. Uh, so we we plan, we are uh, we are leveraging peer to peer technology so that computers can connect to each other and have that resilience uh, uh, th uh, across the network. Uh, using peer to peer technology allows for high availability because multiple peers can stream that uh, uh, that same uh, software to you faster. Think uh, think BitTorrent or similar technologies, right? Uh, and and thus we you will get higher throughput. So we are looking at Persia as, as the decentralized package registry. So when you connect to it, you have, you have the power of this whole network uh, to back you uh, with whatever you are trying to build. Persia will also contain uh, a consensus-based build network. Today, what happens is that a open source developer uh, tells us that they have built a binary and committed it to NPM or Ruby Gems or Maven Central or whatnot. And it is based on a certain Git shop. And they might tell us using some uh, some mechanism which is not provable. It doesn't tell us that this binary it has been produced by this Git shop for sure. There is no one-to-one -one link. Uh, if you if you reflect on what happens in uh, in in-house software development, actually you know the developer who has built it. The developer also gives you the whole CD pipeline that the software has gone through, and hence you trust the binary that has come out on the other side that you that you can deploy. That trust is missing. So Persia. Uh, is working to pro provide that trust. So what Persia will do is it will ask the open source developer to give us a commit hash, and then Persia will uh, randomly pick some nodes on the network to build them, uh, build the binary uh, independently. And multiple nodes on the network will build that independently and and then verify it that the result was the same um, so, that, so that then that can be actually used uh, for, um, uh, for downloads. So that's what Persia will provide. It will build a consensus network, uh, which will make sure that all this, uh, that the binary is uh, is built from a SHA that the uh, open source uh, developer is uh, claiming. So there will be this, this uh, you know, trust automatically built because now you know where it came from, where your, um, uh, where your uh, open source library came from. Here I like an analogy one of my colleagues, Bill Manning is using to describe uh, open source supply chain. He talks about a cake. So when you are making a cake in the recipe, you want to pick elements uh, or uh, ingredients, and you know you want to know where they came from. You want organic things, or you want uh, you know uh, free range uh, free range uh, animal products and so on, right? We need that same trust to be to be put in this software because this software potentially is going to also be part of some healthcare product that you are using and and so on right so we need we need that emphasis and that is what is missing and that's what persia wants to bring bring the transparency so that you can you can eat that cake and knowing where where it was built where the parts of it came from uh, persia will also have something what we are calling as a provenance log uh, today, we, uh, when we look at open source library, we, we can't ask these questions. Where did it came from? Who built this? Uh, was this really built by the open source developer or was there a malicious person coming in between and, and pushing, uh, pushing final binaries, which happened in the case of open, uh, so, solar winds, right? We don't, have, we don't have a place to go and ask these questions. If you want to uh, build, a, uh, build a software bomb, Today, it is a month, many month long process. I used to work on a Kubernetes product for which we actually built the Kubernetes binary in three months because we, ha we, ha we had to keep uh, uh, up to date with the, uh, uh, with, with the Kubernetes releases. But then it took us three more months to actually build the supply, uh, the, the SBOM because it was a manual, hugely manual process. So we want to get rid of that manual process. Uh, so Perse will provide this provenance log where you can ask this question give me the list of dependencies and their transitive dependencies and so on, right? 
And then Percival also record, you know, if there are vulnerabilities discovered, what is the link between the previous version, the vulnerability and the next version and so on, so that you can make decisions based on that. Currently, uh, today, what happens is the release manager basically actively looks at that, that does a manual process of thinking and then does a release process. What if we, ha we had that uh, information baked in into this log where you know, okay, this vulnerability has been fixed in this version, it's ready to be deployed. You can just run it through your CD pipeline. If nothing fails, you can just deploy it and, and remove the human element, right? And personally, the provenance log will provide all this information and, and, and also provide you know, ways for you to build on top of that. So you, you can build automation that suits your organization or the way you build software so that, uh, so that you can make the, put those decisions in place. So, and essentially what we want to ensure is per se is really easy to install and use so that you can, you don't have to change the way you are building software today, uh, but still Persia provides you um, the, uh, the added benefit that Persia is promising. Uh, so you can use the Persia, so Persia will come with a, uh, its own command line uh, interface. So you can use the Persia command line interface to interact with the provenance log, to, in, to ask questions, to fetch images, look at the image, look at uh, look at the binaries and so on, right? Uh, but it will also provide integration. Uh, so we have built one integration with Docker where where you can continue to run the Docker commands, but Persia will will act as a as a proxy layer between Docker and uh, and your CI CD system, so that you don't need to change any of your Docker commands and still get the benefit from Persia. Persia will give you the benefits of downloads via peer to peer and and verification and and the provenance log. So that is our that is our main goal, uh, and we have we do have uh, actually uh, I do have a demo and I I'll do something better than that. Um, we have this demo. I have a I have a YouTube recording of it, uh, but I won't I won't be able here for the demo. But I'll tell you what the demo is about. Uh, on the web on our website we also have the script that allows you to run the demo so you can experience uh, Persia uh, and, and and give us feedback on what you think. Uh, and I'll leave links for all this uh, uh, here. Uh, but basically what we have built so far is, uh, is the Docker integration where when you pull a Docker image, uh, you, get, uh, you get the Docker images via Persia and have the benefit of not uh, traversing the network. Right? And also, let's say you, you, uh, yeah, uh, you, you are downloading large binaries, you'll have the benefit of just downloading it from, uh, it from uh, the Persia node and without changing your CI system. The one thing that we learned when we were thinking about it and thinking through the design process and talking to, uh, talking to our users is that uh, there, are many, many, uh, there are many, many more lines of code that you would have to change if you were to ask people to change their CI systems. Right? So we want to avoid uh, that and have people still continue to use Docker pull or go uh, update and, uh, and similar commands. So we'll build integrations in that, in that way so that it's transparent. Yeah, here is the demo link and I'll, I'll share that with you. Uh, and uh, okay, and then I want to talk a little bit about um, the, um, the architecture uh, and, what, and what it will contain. Um, and then maybe I'll give you some stats about uh, where this project is and then we'll open for questions. Uh, so essentially Persia will come, uh, come with, uh, with its own, uh, uh, what we are calling it as Persia node. So you install the Persia node and it will have, uh, it will have the ability to integrate with, uh, with uh, all these um, uh, language platforms. We have started with Docker because uh, when we started, uh, we looked at um, uh, we uh, we looked at the landscape and found out that you know regardless of your language use you're probably using Docker and that's probably where we should start so that we can get uh, get a meaningful impactful uh, software out there and get feedback from the from the community uh, and also Docker who was our first partner was really uh, uh, you know excited about doing this uh, and they gave us all the uh, you know, technology help that we needed. So what we have is, is the Docker integration. We are now building the Java integration, which will contain Maven and Gradle uh, uh, and those, and, and so on. We'll, we'll start building um, uh, integrations for other languages. Having said that, we are not the experts in all these languages. Uh, the ones I mentioned, Docker, we have help from Docker. Conan, JFrog uh, maintains it. So we, uh, we sort of know how, how to support the C++ community. But for all the others, we are looking from he for help from the community. 
right? And we want it to be driven by the community to tell us whether you know the APIs that are, we are building are sufficient or they need to be modified or uh, and how how that needs to be done and how it will will it will it work with uh, with systems that are uh, vastly different like Maven ecosystem works differently than Go ecosystem versus Ruby ecosystem and so on, right? Uh, and we can we can do our best guess work. Uh, but we would like um, help from the community. Uh, and that's what we are engaging with different communities and talking to uh, different organizations to sort of contribute uh, to this. This is my, sorry, my, okay. Um, when we looked at um, Persia, uh, people asked us about, you know, what what is the, what is the security model? How do we know uh, what we are building is trustworthy uh, uh, and how do, we, uh, how do we enforce that? Uh, so we'll uh, so there are there are technologies that allow for reproducibility, uh, and that's what we'll we'll uh, leverage uh, when, when the language allows that, uh, and a simple network consensus would be enough in that case. When uh, we have when we have an un unreproducible uh, uh, build uh, situation um, in case of Java, C plus plus, etc., we rely uh, and and Docker into. Uh, 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 also, we will rely on the trusted reg registry. We will build the same and then verify with the trusted re registry whether the binaries match, and and that's how that's how we will ensure that that there is enough trust. Uh, also, if there is a question about how do we take in uh, open source libraries so that they are built right. So in that case, uh, all of that comes from the source, and we'll rely on the source like GitHub and GitLab who have who already have mechanisms to verify that the developer is. Who they say are, and 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 they have they have the PGP and uh, keys to verify that they are actually committing um, uh, uh, what they are claiming they are committing. Uh, so that's how we ensure that what comes in is good, uh, and that's how we ensure that what what we are actually committing to what we call the Persia network uh, is trustworthy. Um, here uh, here is how you can get started. You can install Persia. Um, there are some Persia commands you can use. Uh, it is pretty um, uh, what you call simple right now, which tells you the state of node, whether you're connected to uh, peers, and it tells you how many peers you're connected. Uh, and on your CI system, the big thing is you don't have to change anything on your CI system. You don't have to install anything. You continue to do Docker pull, but when uh, Docker pull happens, um, then uh, it, it automatically um, uh, uh, goes through the Persia node. What you need to do is a configuration change where your Docker uh, Docker client connects to the Persia node instead of going Docker directly to Docker, and and there are instructions um, in in the demo script as well. <clears throat> a little bit of about what is inside. Uh, we we are uh, building all this in uh, Rust uh, because we want to support multiple operating systems, and we want to engage as much as the community with various uh, uh, various various flavors of Linux uh, or Unix and uh, and Windows as well. Uh, we have, uh, we are relying on, we are using open source software already. We are using lib P2P, which is part of IPFS, which is another project which, uh, which has done a good job in distributing uh, files on a large network. Uh, and, uh, and we are using the Rust implementation. In fact, we have actually uh, discovered a few things in that Rust implementation and have made commits back. So we don't want to keep things that we discover to ourselves. We want to give it back to the community. Uh, we are using an immutable ledger to store store our uh, provenance log, and we have we have chosen a, a, a open source uh, blockchain implementation called Aleph uh, to help to help us with the consensus on that. Um, so what we are working on, and we are we have uh, we presented this at uh, our, uh, at a recent event where we uh, where we uh, shared that we are building a provenance log that will allow you to do uh, a lot of this automation. We are also building uh, a uh, uh, the ability to stream large binaries uh, over the over the peer to peer network so that you know you can you can get multiple uh, pieces of the binary uh, stream to you and and thus have higher throughput. And then we are also building the infrastructure that will help you do the build part of it, the consensus build part. Of it. Uh, here is how we started and where we are. If you want to find us, we have we are on uh, we are on the uh, OpenSS of Slack when we started. Uh, we are uh, aiming to build a MVP or the first release um, uh, sometime this uh, summer, uh, early summer. Uh, we are already collaborating with uh, with projects. We have uh, individual contributors as well as uh, contributors from different orgs. Uh, we are also engaged with um, projects that are uh, working in the similar field, uh, like Sixtor. You may have heard uh, or not or not review to V2, where 
we want to integrate with them instead of rebuilding that. Uh, here is what we have done. Uh, we have since the beginning, we have had all the all everything that we are doing in public. Uh, we we have a Google Drive which is shared with with you when you join. Uh, we have public meetings; they are all recorded. You can join. Uh, uh, you can listen to them, uh, and uh, and give us feedback. Uh, we are running it as a typical agile project, so you can join a, a, our daily stand up or you know our retrospective or uh, our sprint planning to find out what's going on. We also have community face uh, uh, face face meetings every two weeks to talk about where the architecture is going or where the project is going in general, uh, etc. Uh, we are also uh, engaging with the community via various, um, you know, uh, meetups and and uh, discussions like this uh, to to engage, get feedback, and and move forward. <clears throat> uh, so if you would like to get involved, uh, first thing, go to our website, persia.io. Really easy to remember. Give us feedback. Either you know, give us give us on uh, the Twitter uh, handle. Go to our GitHub. Give us feedback there. Join any of the team meetings. Uh, and uh, if nothing else, you know, tell your friends that uh, we have this project going on and we, we are looking for people to get involved. <clears throat> so to, to summarize, you know, supply chain attacks are, are still, still here uh, before and after COVID. They are still active. The hackers are still active. Uh, NSA, NSA is still worried uh, about the severity of these attacks and we need to do something about it. And Persia is trying, uh, Persia is one effort uh, which is trying to make, uh, to change how we build open source software. So please join us. <clears throat> and thank you. I'll open it up for questions. Thanks, Sudhindra. I see a question from Ankit. Uh, Ankit, you yeah. want to? Uh... Yeah, Ankit, tell me. Uh, so, I, uh, so I just had you know, like one question. Uh, so if I have you know, like my images in say you know, like Amazon, uh, will this also work? Like it seems like it works mostly with Docker Hub or maybe with, you know, like Artifactory Store. I mean, uh, uh, so like that's, that's like, that is the one question I have. So, so the one, so uh, what uh, Persia has built is built for open source. And uh, we want to, so I, I, I think of when you say AWS ECR, it is not the open source ones, right? It is, it is the ones that are built by you. Uh, so on Docker Hub, we are only, uh, only pulling the images that Docker themselves have certified and verified. Uh, and that's, that's how we maintain the trust. So anything that is open source that has been again built by Docker and published under the, uh, uh, under the default uh, namespace is what you will have uh, available with Persia. Persia will not be able to integrate uh, or pull images from something that is closed source, uh, because one thing that Persia needs is the is the gitsha uh, of 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 the source so that you can pull it and build it independently. Okay, does so uh, sorry, go ahead. So, uh, yeah, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, so you know, like Amazon also has a public you know like gallery today, uh, where we can also store you know like open source uh, you mm -hmm. know, like images. Uh, does mm -hmm. that work just so steve do you want to uh, yeah yeah let me <laughs> let me let me try to answer the question and um um so i i, I think that, like the way of thinking about this is um what the the backing store for persia is a a, a verified build from source farm for open source projects um so you can't upload anything to the Persian network. Like you can't um, push images into the Persian network. Um, you can only pull images which were built by the Persian network from the peer-to-peer -peer system. Um, so even if you have an open ECR, you could you could pull things from Persia down into your ECR instance and you know mm -hmm. carry the signatures with them um, if you wanted to redistribute them via container registry. Um, but if you've pushed images into a into a um, like for example, ECR, even if you built them yourselves from open source, um, the, the guarantee on Percy is everything coming from the Percy network is built by this distributed um, uh, verified um, build from source infrastructure. And it's not JFrog specific. Um, so yeah. all the member companies will be running an instance of this. Um, so JFrog, Docker, um, Deploy Hub is also a member company. Oracle is a, a member company. Future Way, um, who's who's one of the um, CDF sponsors, and also Huawei, 
um, and we're we're welcome, and we want more people to to join the project and um, and also run this infrastructure. But as a as an end user using it, you're you're relying upon the builds of open source projects from these companies to be um, um, built, verified, and that's the the, the provenance and the um, like the the origin of the builds you're pulling. Okay. Did, did that answer your question, Anka? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, hey, Brett. Uh, I read your question. Is is there plans for Kubernetes support? Can you say more? What do you mean by? Uh, uh, is it other than pulling images for Kubernetes or? Uh, yeah. You... Uh, well, okay. So um, we don't use Docker. We're we're phasing Docker out of our pipeline. Ah, Everything's okay. going to be Kubernetes. And so Docker pull, while that's great, it doesn't help us. Um, so I'm trying to figure out where this fits in my pipeline. And so what I heard was, is that it's only for open source images, right? So now you're telling, now it sounds like these are be my base images. Right, so Nginx, um, uh, you know, whatever I'm mm -hmm. pulling down um, that I would normally get from Docker IO, uh, the Docker Hub. Um, we don't. In the future, we so we try not to pull images from Docker Hub because they rate limit on us and it breaks our CI/CD pipeline. Um, so we pull the images from Docker Hub, scan them, and stick them in a private registry. So what mm -hmm. I'm hearing is is that. What I would do with uh, Persia is, is I would um, use Persia to pull these images from the Persian network, scan them, and then put them in my private repo. And I'd have a much better uh, feeling about the, the the authenticity of the image. Yeah. Does that sound about right? Yeah. So, yeah. so to answer your initial question, like, yes, there is plans to, um, to include Kube Control and other Kubernetes tools to add first class Persia support for them. Okay. Um, um, on, on like the use case scenario, I think you got that accurately. So um, first, when you, when you pull things off the Persia network, obviously you're, you're not rate limited at all. Um, and so that's, you don't run into the same issues you hit with, for example, pulling from Docker Hub. Um, it still is a best practice to, um, especially if you're using it for builds or an enterprise system to pull it into your own repository manager. And we have a command line tool for Persia where you can directly pull things from the network, put them in a local folder, kind of do what you want to with the peer-to-peer images. So you could do your own integration via the, um, the Persia command line tool or for repository managers which support it, um, they should treat Persia just like a, an upstream remote repository. So it should be pretty straightforward to just swap out Docker Hub for Persia as the upstream repository. Okay. Um, so yeah, I mean, we're in the process of, I'm in the process of implementing salsa in our pipeline and we're shooting for level four. So we're talking signed provenance and zero trust. So I, I'm going to pull the images down, scan them, mm -hmm. you know, create signed provenance for them and stick them in my registry. And then I'm not going to use them unless I can verify that they're signed even internally. So um, that's kind of what we're up to. So I was trying to see where this fits in. So it sounds like I use this for, um, for populating my internal repo. Yeah, um, exactly. Okay. And I, I think you're, the, the guarantee you're getting by, by pulling it off the Percy network in general, um, and we're working on phase two of this architecture now, is um, it, like in the case of Docker official images and pulling from Docker Hub, you're, you're basically trusting Docker as the only one who's built and verified these. And, <laughs> I don't um, trust Docker. Yeah, so. <laughs> We, 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 in general, we think you, you shouldn't, you shouldn't trust us. You shouldn't trust JFrog. You shouldn't trust Docker, but you should trust the aggregation of um, many different companies, which are building and verifying the same image. And, yes. um, you know, some large companies like, um, you know, Google, Microsoft and others have their own internal build from source farms where they, they, they do this and they, they of course only trust themselves. But um, we, we think that this sort of infrastructure should just be free, available, and something that um, all companies can rely upon if it's a shared infrastructure where it has a, a trust model where you're not relying upon a single entity, but you're relying upon the, um, the majority of the consensus of all the companies involved. Yeah, and I, I'm, I'm super excited that you guys are seeing this because I have been mulling about having 
basically like a twin pipeline for my software where I build my image in one pipeline and I build it in the other pipeline and then I compare the images and see if they're mm -hmm. the same. And um, I, I've been thinking about it. Now it's one of those ones where, uh, you know, I have to have, I have all these priorities to keep getting pushed on me and I got to get all this stuff done. And the twin pipeline sounds like a nice to have and it's a lot of compute, but I, I appreciate the idea here. And, um, yeah, and um, so I think the other thing which which will come out of this, which should be helpful to you as well, is um, we we plan all this uh, a to be built on CD technology, CD foundation technologies like um, Tecton and CD events um, and on all open source. And B, I, I think it should also, especially our build pipeline portion of the project, should serve as a great reference architecture. If yeah. you want to run your own build from source internally, and um, mm -hmm. you know either build open source projects or even internal closed source projects. I think it'll be a great reference architecture for that sort of um, infrastructure that you run yourselves. Cool. Yeah. Hey, Brett. So just if you're thinking about it, please, please join us on one of our calls. We, we will take all kinds of input. If you have a rough sketch of what you, what you think is a good idea, what you think is a bad idea, please share that with us. Well, you don't have yeah. to contribute by lines of code only is what I say. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, you know, I don't trust anybody anymore. So, and the more <laughs> the more I've read the salsa spec, the more paranoid I get. And I haven't done anything but talk about security since uh, January. And I quit being a sysadmin because I was tired of security and I went into development. Now here I am 15 years later, right back where I was, <laughs> worried about security all the time. So, um, but yeah, it's pretty cool. And it's written in Rust, it makes it better, right? Yep. <laughs> so I, I want to highlight something we've been discussing within the SIG uh, since the SIG was formed around February or March. Like we have been uh, looking into how SIG events started working with the topic they have been working on, like this events topic. and. The first one of the first things they have done is to bring up some kind of proof of concept, and that has been one of the topics we have been discussing within our city as well. It would make a lot of sense to look at Persia to see like how we can you know collaborate on that more concrete approach to these things because when you put Persia in this type of you know pipeline using different uh, CDF technologies, like you mentioned, still that may make it easier to grasp the details and the benefits of the project. And that could also perhaps become input to reference architecture you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So anyone else? Okay, Andrew has a question there. Yeah, okay. So a Andrew's wondering if, if Percy can also validate open source projects that aren't built into images like libraries. So we um, were planning support for a bunch of different programming languages and the intermediate build artifacts. Um, so um, with, with Oracle as our partner, one of the first targets is going to be the Java ecosystem. Um, we're working with their build from source team and um, they're, they're interested to build as much of the Java ecosystem um, that we can reproduce and verify um, as possible so that they can use it both for their internal purposes, but also open up to the world and have a, a more secure um, source repository for, for Java jars. Um, same applies to um, JavaScript, to um, um, PyPy, to, um, um, to Go and to Rust, of course, because we're building on top of Rust. Um, now that said, as soon as you mentioned this a little bit earlier, um, so we, we're going to build out a, as many validators as we can and um, work with the open source community on these, but we, this is an area we need help with for folks who are experts in different language communities and, and are interested to, um, to build a, a, um, an integration point into, into different ecosystems. So I was chatting with um, Terry from SciCode yesterday and um, he, he's interested in specifically doing something in the PyPy space because that's that's an area which he's very passionate about. Um, and we, I think we are looking for folks who are like super passionate about a particular ecosystem to be either our advocate or to, to take a pass at doing an implementation of an API for a language specific library. But from a Percy architecture standpoint, we can store different um, 
artifact types from different languages. Um, but what we want to do is we want to make sure that when we say that we support the ecosystem, that we have a, a good broad base of support such that it's, um, um, it's easy for you to integrate with that system as a, as a software developer and also from CI CD systems and, and build pipelines down the, down the stack. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. I, oh, sorry. Did you, were you going to say something else? No, no go ahead. No. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I asked because, um, SAS is majority a go shop. Um, and I've noticed that one of the things that scares me even more than pulling random images off of Docker is, you know, finding an open source library. That's like, man, this thing's really useful. I'm going to, throw this in and use it and i haven't read every last line of code <laughs> so that's why i was curious Thanks yeah yeah so so go go is one of the ecosystems that we're planning to support um i i think that it it is something we actually use quite a bit at jfrog so um like x-ray and a lot of our products are, are written in golang yeah um we we chose rust for this project um because we wanted to make sure that we we'd have um, more ability to um, do code code verification and reason about the security of the system. And I think in terms of like modern languages, which are very security focused, Rust is, is kind of leading the edge. But I mean, Go is a, a great language as well. And that was would have been our um, second choice for this implementation. Yeah. Um, so um, yeah. we've got a yeah. bunch of, uh, we've got a bunch of NPM crud running around and i think like in the grand scheme of things the scariest uh language that pulls random packages in off the off the internet has got to be npm so and i think it was on the list is that going to be supported yeah as well? yeah we, we will support npm now um speaking of security exploits most of the security exploits are our, our research team finds are in npm um <laughs> and there's there's multiple levels of, of issues there. So um, it's very easy to upload things um, with no yes. verification. Um, they, they, don't, um, they don't really lock down namespaces. So it is very vulnerable to, to typo squatting attacks, to dependency injection attacks, because they, they, they do zero verification of, of your, your namespace that you're uploading to. Um, and it's very easy, you know, you think, you know, JavaScript is, is um, just text, but it's very easy to obfuscate the code and hide malicious libraries, which are impossible to reverse engineer if you don't have the original source it's built off of. So again, like doing, doing your own verification of these is, is almost impossible because of the obfuscation of the libraries you get out without the original source code and that provenance about exactly what you're getting. Right. And uh, so I can, one of the things I can see Persia fitting in for us is, is it, it ends up being a proxy before we pull stuff in and stick it in Artifactory. Cause yeah, we're, we're a JFrog shop. Um, we help. Yeah. yeah. And well, so, so from a, like an Artifactory standpoint, it will, it will just, um, when we implement support for it, it will just be another remote repository option that you can choose. So from that okay. standpoint, it it'll, should be easy to set up and configure to pull from Persia um and you you could still pull images from other sources but at least the ones you know pull from persia you know the the provenance you know that they're that the exactly what you're getting is what you would get if you built it off source yourself right okay um artifactory right. cloud so we've been talking about going to artifactory cloud i don't want to turn this into jfrog meeting but are you guys gonna have a way for persia to integrate into your your cloud offering? Yeah, I mean, it, it's exactly the same product. So it would treat, okay. it, would, it would look like a remote repository in Artifactory Cloud. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Hey, and I wanted to just make a comment because earlier also Ankit mentioned, you know, you're, you're, you're JFrog, so Artifactory integration is obvious. One thing I want to highlight is Artifactory is meant for you to do, run your business, right? But what we notice is that we don't have the same emphasis uh, that we have for in uh, what homegrown software for open source. And that is what Persia is trying to fix. As JFrog, we will bring everything that we know about efficiently storing artifacts and you know indexing them and doing all, all the kinds of cool things that we are doing in terms of storing and retrieving artifacts. 
but this is not meant to default to artifactory or, or, or anything like that. This is meant to solve a problem for the open source community. Uh, and which is why you'll see that, you know, we integrate with Docker because that is what is most used and so on. And it is emphasis is on open source. Artifactory focuses more on, uh, you know, your proprietary software, I would say. Right. Um, we use Artifactory to store our onboarded third-party libraries, which a lot of them are open source. So that's why I was going down that route. Uh, I'm just trying Fine. to get trying to figure out how this thing's going to fit into our pipelines because you know we're not producing open source software we're producing you know yeah. a, a product that we sell but we use open source software so um yeah i'm just trying to figure out where we're going to stick this thing uh one of the one of the ways that this might uh, uh might get used in your your system is if you if you are to were to run a small set of persia nodes and if you're downloading the same things over and over, you could now rely on your set of Persia nodes to get the throughput that you need without having to go all the way across the network. And when a new library comes, then you can do that. Think about, you know, think, think about the same mechanism that you use today to, you know, uh, uh, replicate your Git repositories. We would like Persia to act like that and give you that resilience as well. Excellent. Okay, any other questions? No, let us know if you have any other questions offline. Um, I, I, let, I put the presentation link uh, on the HackMD, uh, which has all our contact information um, as well. Uh, so, so, yeah, so Pingmi, Pingra, yeah. We, yeah. we like we give action items to whoever joins to our uh, SIG meeting. <laughs> Can I do the oh, same totally. with you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now, uh, if you, go to the repository I linked on the chat. There is a presentation okay. repository on GitHub under CD Foundation. Sure. Uh, we uh, store all the presentations we get from uh, projects there. I will create a folder there, a six sure. software supply chain, and send a mail to you. So if you could export your slides in Absolutely. PDF form and store them on repo so we don't use the Google Doc link and so oh, on. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. More than happy to do that. Thanks. And one last question, uh, follow up of technology site committee meeting discussion. Steve uh, Taylor mentioned that you are thinking of proposing Persia yes. uh, by opening a pull request. So, yes, we are working on that, yeah. Okay. So we should follow, uh, monitor the TOC repo to see yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so we're, we're, working, we're working on putting the pull request in. I, I think what we can do is send a um, an email out to the to the talk mailing list to let folks know when the poll request is available. Yeah. Maybe use that as a thread to answer any questions that folks have about it. And um, if if we get good alignment and, and folks are in agreement, then you know ask folks to approve the PR. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I I will follow the QoS mailing list because the, the reason why I was asking this because if the pull request goes there, maybe keeping all the feedback on pull requests would be good for historical purposes as well. Oh, yeah. Otherwise, people need to find the mail thread on mail list and vice versa. So yeah, yeah, we could we can we could do feedback on the poll request instead. So you want me to like send the email and then we direct people to the poll request to give feedback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like if they like if they put their feedback directly on pull request, then it will be easier okay, for perfect. everyone, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, thanks a lot for this, you know, Steve, presenting this. It looks really interesting. I actually installed Persia and tried it out, and I, I think that was something I mentioned to one of the comic members as well. Like, we were looking for something like that last year when Docker Hub introduced rate limiting. And we, <laughs> I don't remember what did we use. I think we used Podman as a fallback solution, which didn't work on Ubuntu 18 or something. So it looks pretty mm -hmm. cool, but now it is a new project. So hopefully more things will be done within the project. Yep. yep. Okay. So uh, with that, the next meeting of R6 should be on July 14th, but usually we take a break for SIG meetings, not just R6, but other SIGs as well during July because people go for summer holidays. So I will send notifications on mail list and Slack 
about the next meeting, if we are having the meeting on July 14th or not, and then depending on the response, then we can cancel those meetings and reconvene after that, uh, at a later date. But again, everyone, please look at the TOC report, start watching the TOC report uh, to see when uh, Persia PR hits there. Also, please subscribe to TOC mail list if you want to get notified via mail as well. And with that, thank you again, everyone, for joining. And if you are taking time off, have a nice summer holiday. If not, then we talk to we see each other in a few weeks' time. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. That's cool.